Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Today is the disappearance day of Srila Jayadev Goswami. Um, so we'll read about the life uh, and the glories of Srila Jayadev Goswami. Om Agyanati Mirandasya, Gyananjana Salakaya, Chakshur Militam Yena, Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha. Sri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale, Swayam Rupa Hakada Mahim Dadati Swapadantikam. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Preshtaya Bhutale, Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine. Namaste Saraswate Deve, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschati Deshatarine. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <coughs> Jayadev Goswami 300 years before the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Jayadev Goswami served as the court pandit of Sri Lakshman Sen, King of Bengal. Jayadev and Padmavati, his wife and an expert dancer, used to worship Lord Sri Krishna with single-minded devotion. After some time, he left the opulent royal life to live peacefully in a grass hut in Champahati, Navadvip. Here, Jayadev wrote Gita Govinda. One day, while working on Gita Govinda, Jayadev felt inspired to write, Krishna bows down to touch the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani. Jayadev was hesitant to say something which might diminish Lord Krishna's position as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He went to refresh himself with a Ganges bath before honoring Radha Madhava's Mahaprasad. In his absence, Krishna himself, disguised as Jayadev, wrote a line in the Gita Govinda, Dehi Pada Pallavam Udaram. The Lord also accepted prasadam from Padmavati. Upon returning, Jayadev was astonished to see the line. Understanding the mystery, Jayadev cried in spiritual joy and said, Padmavati, we are most fortunate. Sri Krishna himself has written the line, Dehi Pada Pallavam Udaram, and taken prasadam from your hand. Gita Govinda expresses the intense feelings of separation that Sri Radhika felt before the Rasa dance. It also describes the most intimate pastimes of Radha Shamsundar. During Lord Chaitanya's Gambhir Leela in Jagannath Puri, he would thoroughly relish hearing the Gita Govinda sung daily by Swarup Damodar and Mukunda. The author Jayadev Goswami describes Gita Govinda. Whatever is delightful in varieties of music Whatever is graceful in fine strains of poetry and whatever is exquisite in the sweet art of love, let the happy and wise learn from the songs of Jayadev. After finishing Gita Govinda, Jayadev visited Vrindavan and then lived his last in Jagannath Puri. He introduced daily reading of Gita Govinda in the temple for the pleasure of Lord Jagannath. His Samadhi is in the 64 Samadhis area. Sri Jayadev Goswami was the court pandit of Sri Lakshman Sen, the king of Bengal. Jayadev's father was Bhojadev and his mother's name was Bama Devi. They lived in the Birbhum district of what is now West Bengal in a village called Kenu Bilva Gram. He was born at the beginning of the 12th century AD. So we are now in the 21st century. So he was born in the 12th century, the beginning of 12th century. Jayadev Goswami's wife was named Shri Padmavati. 
when he was the court pandit of lakshman sen he lived on the banks of the ganges approximately 300 years before the appearance of sri chaitanya mahaprabhu sri jayadev goswami lived in bengal he was the author of sri geeta govinda which is mentioned by krishnadas kaviraj goswami in the chaitanya charitamrita as follows chaitanya charitamrita madhya leela chapter 2 text 11 Day and night in the company of Swarup Damodar and Ramananda Rai Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to hear with great ecstasy the songs of Vidyapati and Chandidas as well as a drama composed by Ramananda Rai He also used to relish hearing the Krishna Karnamrita and the Geeta Govinda In his introduction Jayadev says that the Geeta Govinda is a scripture describing the intimate pastimes of sri radha and govinda it may be worshiped and served by those who are extremely qualified in devotional piety for those who are constantly remembering the rasika pastimes of sri hari within his mind sri jayadev has composed this divine poetic song glorifying the lord's internal pastimes he requests the topmost spiritually advanced souls to hear it with gravity and attention there are many many traditional stories regarding the life of sri jayadev the following story is generally accepted as authoritative one day sri jayadev goswami was composing a particularly sensitive section of the geeta govinda describing krishna's relationship with the gopis headed by radharani he meditated deeply on what he had written and became concerned that he had perhaps gone too far in describing the exalted character of the gopis what he had written seemed to represent krishna's position as being in a sense subordinate to that of the gopis and yet krishna is the supreme personality of godhead how could he be subordinate to the gopis he had been inspired to pen a line stating that krishna bows down to touch the lotus feet of sri radha but his hand shrank from the page he hesitated thinking how can i commit such an idea to writing how can i have the audacity to put such a thing in black and white at that time he decided to go bathe in the ganges in hopes that perhaps some inspiration would come to him Jayadev Goswami went off to take his afternoon bath leaving his wife Padmavati behind to cook the offering for the deities while he was away Krishna arrived at his house in the dress of Jayadev Krishna went over to Jayadev's writing desk and there found the sleeves of the leaves sheaves of palm upon which the Geeta Govinda was written Krishna picked up Jayadev's pen and wrote the verse with the line dehi pada pallava mudam mudaram pallava mudaram wherein it says krishna bows down his head to the lotus feet of shri radha with this krishna disguised as jayadev sat down and took the prasadam prepared by padmavati after finishing his prasadam krishna stepped outside and vanished Just at that time Jayadev returned from bathing at the Ganges when he asked about prasadam his wife was perplexed when she told Jayadev what had just happened Jayadev was astonished he went over to his book and saw there in wet ink the verse he had thought of writing before he had gone to bathe in the Ganges Dehi pada pallavam udaram Krishna bows down his head to the lotus feet of Sri Radha Upon seeing that verse he said to Padmavati It is a miracle see here what i told you i was reluctant to write has been written here exactly as i thought of it tears of ecstasy flowed in rivers from his eyes as he understood the mystery of what had just transpired Padmavati he said you are most fortunate Krishna himself has written the line Dehi pada pallavam udaram and accepted prasadam from your own hand Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur has written that although Chandidas Vidyapati Bilvamangal and Jayadev lived before Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was externally manifest within this world Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's conception of bhakti 
had arisen within their hearts and was expressed in their writings. Besides the Gita Govinda, Jayadev Goswami has written another book called Chandraloka, the famous Dashavatar Gita describing the ten avatars of Vishnu is from Gita Govinda. Jayadev Goswami's disappearance day is on Pausha Sankranti at present at Jayadev's birthplace in Kendu Bilva Gram. There is a festival every year on this day which is known as the Jayadev Mela. So today there is Jayadev Mela at Kendu Bilva Kendu Bilva Gram or Kenu Bilva Gram. There's one more biography of Srila Jayadev Goswami. Sri Jayadev Goswami appeared in either the 11th or 12th century of the Shaka era. There is a difference of opinion about his place of birth. The majority opinion holds that he hailed from the village of Kendu Bilva, presently in the district of Birbhum. Others claim that he was born in either Orissa or South India. Kendu Bilva is situated about 20 miles south of Siuri on the banks of the Ajaya River. In the Gaudiya Vaishnav Abhidhan, it is stated that Jayadev found his Radha Madhav deities in this river's waters. He found the deities in the river. It is also stated there that he used to rest and worship at the temple of Shiva known as Kusheshwar, which is also on the banks of the Ajaya river. Jayadev's father was named Bhojadev and his mother Vama Devi. Jayadev's life in Navadvip. Jayadev lived for a long time in Navadvip during the reign of the king of Bengal, Lakshman Sen making his home not far from the king's palace. At that time, the king's chief scholar was Govardhan Acharya. According to Ashutosh Dev's Bengali dictionary, Jayadev was Lakshman Sen's court poet. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur writes in his Navadip Dham Mahatmya that Lakshman Sen was delighted when he heard Jayadev's hymn to the ten incarnations, the Dashavatar Stotra, when Govardhan Acharya notified the king that it was Jayadev who had composed the hymn, he became desirous to meet the poet. He went incognito to Jayadev's house, and when he saw him, he noticed that Jayadev possessed all the characteristics of a great and powerful spiritual personality. Deeply impressed and attracted to Jayadev, the king revealed his identity to him and invited him to come and live in the royal palace. Jayadev was leading a very renounced life and was therefore unwilling to live in the opulent environment of the palace. He told the king that he preferred to live in Jagannath Puri. Lakshman Sen was disappointed by Jayadev's intentions. He quickly suggested that he take up residence in the village of Champahati, saying that it was a place suitable for a person who wished to lead a meditative life. He also promised him that he would never come to disturb him again. When Jayadev agreed, Lakshman Sen had a cottage built for him in the village that was formerly known as Champaka Hatta, named after the beautiful garden of Champa trees and the village market where Mahaprabhu's associate Dvija Baninath received a vision of him in the Satya Yuga. Baninath received a vision of him in the Satya Yuga seeing him in the form of a Brahman whose skin was the color of champa flower. Similarly, Jayadev had a vision here, first of Radha Madhav, then of their combined form as the golden champa go, champa colored Gauranga Mahaprabhu. After the Lord gave Jayadev this vision, he told him to go to Jagannath Puri. Although Jayadev was sad to leave the future abode of his Lord, he obeyed the Lord's command and made his way to Puri, where it is said that he was engaged as the king of Orissa's court poet. He spent the remainder of his life in the abode of Lord Jagannath, where he wrote the transcendental poem based on the sentiment of love in separation, known as Gita Govinda or Ashtapadi. Indeed, Mahaprabhu told Jayadev, while giving him the vision of Navadvip, that after appearing there, 
he would take sanyas and go to Jagannath Puri where he would relish the Gita Govinda. Further information about the life of Jayadev is found in the preface to the Calcutta Basumari Sahitya Mandir. The further information about the life of Jayadev is found in the preface to the Calcutta Basumari Sahitya Mandir edition of Gita Govinda. Some time prior to the Muslim conquest of Delhi, King Manikya Chandra ordered the writing of the book Alankar Shekhara, in which Jayadev is mentioned as the court poet of the king of Orissa. Sridhar Das, the son of one of the chief courtiers of Lakshman Sen, included many of Jayadev's verses in his anthology, Shard Upti Karnamrita, citing a work named Amiyabha Kavya, the colophon to one ancient manuscript of the Gita Govinda states, Jayadev had a great reputation as a poet during the time of Lakshman Sen, Jayadev's marriage to Padmavati. According to legend, Jagannath himself ordered Jayadev to marry his wife Padmavati. The story is told in the Vishwakosha as follows. There once was a Brahman who was without offspring, despite having worshipped Jagannath for many years in the hope of having a son. Finally, he and his wife had a daughter and they named her Padmavati. When she came of marriageable age, the Brahman brought her to Lord Jagannath to offer her to his lotus feet. When he saw them, Jagannath said to the Brahman, I have a servant whose name is Jayadev. He has given up family life and has dedicated himself to chanting my names. Give your daughter to him in marriage. The Brahman took his daughter to Jayadev and asked him to marry his daughter. However, since Jayadev had no desire to get married, he refused to agree to any such arrangement. The Brahman then told him that it was Jagannath himself who had arranged this marriage. And without another word, he left, leaving his daughter behind. <laughs> Jayadev found himself totally unprepared for this situation and told the girl, Tell me where you want to go and I will take you and leave you there. You cannot stay here. Padmavati started to cry and said, My father brought me here to marry you on Jagannath Dev's order. You are my husband, my all in all. If you do not accept me, then I will fall down at your feet and die right here. You are my only hope, my lord. The poet and scholar Jayadev could not abandon her after such a heartfelt plea. So he became a householder. Jayadev goes to Vrindavan. Later, Jayadev took his deities Radha and Madhav with him and set off on the long journey. Once in Vrindavan, he began to serve his deities in an area near Keshi Ghat. When the residents of the Dham heard Jayadev sing the Gita Govinda in his sweet voice, they were entranced, entranced. One merchant built a large temple for the deities on that site. It is said that Jayadev returned to his birthplace in Kendu Bilva after living in Vrindavan for many years. He spent the rest of his life there, worshipping his deities and performing his bhajan. He would make the long walk to the Ganges every day to take his bath there. One day, for some reason or another, he was unable to make it. Ganga Devi was so kind to him that she came personally to the village of Kendu Bilva so that he would bathe in her holy waters. It is said that Jayadev died in Kendu Bilva and every year on the first day of the month of Mag, a large festival is held there in his memory. There is, however, a difference of opinion about where Jayadev finished his life. Though some say he returned to Kendu Bilva, others claim it was Puri and still others say that he went to Vrindavan. Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Thakur has stated his opinion that Jayadev left this world from Jagannath Puri. Though some people say that Jayadev returned to Kendu Bilva to spend his last days, there is no indication anywhere that he brought his Radha Madhav deities with him. In fact, these deities were taken by the king of Jaipur to a place named Ghati, sometimes after Jayadev's passing away, and they are still being served in the Jaipur area. Jayadev's disappearance day is on the sixth day of the waning moon of the month of Paush. So 
that's the Radha Madhav deity of Jayadev Goswami. Yes, these are the Radha Madhav deities of Srila Jayadev Goswami. Srila Jayadev Goswami ki jai. Today is the disappearance day of Srila Jayadev Goswami. I think we have covered all the biographies. Yes. Hare Krishna.